Welcome, super fans, to the first episode of Vicious Villains, where we decide who would win between Hank Scorpio and Mr. Freeze. Let's get to it. Super Ginge! What is up, super fans of the Ginger League? We are back for Super Ginge! Always have to do it. Sorry, man. But joining me today what is, is my, my apprentice, who will soon be taking over the reins of Super Ginge, provided we get the traction that we're getting, Kevin Tierney. Kevin, how you doing, my man? Not too bad. Not too bad. Busy day, but you know, mm. coming well, we down now. Oh, well, you up to day. How's the wee ones? Uh, well, are they fine? Uh, it was the oldest birthday the day. That was her 11. Oh, wow. You doing nice for it? So... Uh, well, we went to Deep Sea World at the weekend. Oh, just as nice that, one. Anytime, that I, anytime I hear Sea World now, I just instantly think of the family guy. It's like, Dad, what's the blowhole? I'll tell you what it's not for, son. And then you'll understand why I can never go back to Sea World. Anytime I hear that. I remember what's come back for me. Yeah. It's the Simpsons for me, but it's the Troy McClure. Yeah. I thought he said he was dead. No, I said he sleeps with the fishies. <laughs> I'm going to Sea World. Well, that was the other one. Uh, uh, I got like, I got the crap scared out of me in Sea World first time I ever went. I was just just I thought I was about seven or something, walking past my grand and papa, and all of a sudden I just see this big ass shark just going past me, and what? Like, because it was just I was just like staring at saying no, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> it, like, it doesn't vouch for my manliness, but I don't have any manliness, so there's nothing really to vouch for, is there? <laughs> Well, my uh, fans, what you have been asking, because we've done a couple of super ginges for the, the super fights by this point, and you've been asking about whether we were going to get the villains on the go. So we like to listen to our fans. We like to engage with the community of, of fellow nerds and fellow dorks, fellow geeks. I even have a tiering system if we need to find out about it. So we are going to start with uh, another series of vicious villains. And that same premise as super fights, we take any what a uh, villain, a super villain from any genre, any medium. Well, uh, Kevin and I will will fight it out to see who fit who wins over the three categories. The first one is cultural relevance, and that is how they have impacted our society as a whole in terms of media, mainstream, pop culture. Then we move on to abilities, both physical and mental abilities, what and how they would compare in an actual fight. And the last round, the, the one that seems to trip people up is the universal significance. And that is when, if we removed that person from their specific universe, how would that universe be affected without them? So this will be a very interesting bout. What I'm, what I'm very intrigued by it. It was uh, one of them was down to my good friend uh, Billy McGinty from my old day job, or as I call him, King Billy. What? Well, uh, yeah, because he's a massive Rangers fan. Well, and he said, what well, uh, suggested, who Kevin is going to be defending the honor of, and that is Hank Scorpio from The Simpsons. The one thing I've got, I've got to ask before we jump in, like, do you think that Hank Scorpio is, would class as a supervillain? Technically, he is. I mean, he, he made his own society. Mm. It's true. He got people to work for him. Mm. And he but, tried to kill James Bond. Yeah. Well, he succeeded, actually. Twice. Yeah. He did succeed, in fairness. And he succeeded, he did, in, his, and, and he succeeded in his evil project as well. So... Well, when Billy suggested that, I was like, I was like, should I count him as a super villain? Well, because obviously, remember the Simpsons episode where we had uh, talked about cartoonish super villainy, and we had Doctor Colossus who was trapped in the jail. Mm -hmm. I was like, he could have been one, but I think Scorpio is what well, definitely, especially the last name Hank Scorpio. That just sounds like a I good know. name, and he's ginger as well. So we've we've got to get him in. I think I think That's that true. I think that was what I had to count it. So. We, did, we had a wee debate of who we were going to uh, go up against this, and I had the inspiration from seeing one picture of Hank Scorpio, and it's the infamous one where he's got the flamethrower uh, setting guys on fire, and I thought, what's a, what's a good catch? A song of ice and fire? So mm -hmm. I picked 
Mr. Freeze from Batman. And I'll be, I'm very interested about this because in the very first uh, Super Fights, well, I did mention about Mr. Freeze and how I did like Arnold Schwarzenegger's interpretation of the character as well. So it seems, it seems fitting, it seems right that I will be defending this man's heart of frozen glass. That what do you think? Good. It does indeed. So <clears throat> you, re you ready to jump right into it and see how we go? Yep, let's go. Okay. Well, one day I will find a bell sound so we can do like a, a ding ding, like you know, for each round. So until then, I'm just gonna go ding ding. <laughs> so round one, which is cultural relevance. Again, this is how these characters have impacted on media as a whole, mainstream, pop culture, the whole the whole shebang. So what well, Kev. I'm going to let you start with Hank Scorpio because you have kind of touched on his cultural significance already. And especially yep. like the fact that not only did Mammy Billy suggest Hank Scorpio, but people seem really excited about Hank Scorpio being mentioned in this. So I think that that does show he does have a level of cultural significance, especially since he's been a one and done in 30 odd years of The Simpsons. Well, he, he did show up sort of in the credits at one point in another episode and mm. then he's mentioned he's got a picture up from like the wall of fame in another episode so yeah. he's been in three technically mm. but uh, he's been in like six or seven of the comics as well ah, so the Simpsons have got like actual like comics I remember I used to have like the kind of annual comics and like Treehouse of Horror ones I remember reading them when I was a kid one, one, which was, one which was actually a very Deadpool meta. Sideshow Bob comes out and tells everybody that they're all characters in a cartoon and that as you turn the pages, they cease to exist. And I remember the last mm -hmm. the last line was Homer saying, if I don't exist, do I still get donuts? Yeah. I read uh, that one. That was good. That was, that was a really was, good one. So how long did the comic last for? Do you know? Uh, I think they're still going. Uh, nice. I think they do like... I think they do like collection editions as well. Yeah, I've got some of them sitting next to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was my, it was my brother that Futurama had them. a crossover one. Oh, nice! Aye. you got it there. I've got that as well. Uh, I. Uh, oh, I got to see this. This is this is my ner nerd vana kicking in. <laughs> I'm just admiring the nice uh, butterfly portrait on your wall while you're having a look. What? That's really nice. Like, what was it? The wife that suggested that. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it must be something to do with like wives and wanting to like put pictures up what, because we've got one in our room as well. And um, because of the picture we got was a certain kind of duck egg blue color, then we had to go and look for other things that were duck egg. You know how difficult aye. it is to find the colored duck egg. Fucking it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Aye. I mean, yeah. there is there is another picture on the other wall, and it just says "Hot Fudge Sunday, Twenty Cents." That is nice. <laughs> nice. That, that, I saw it as that. No, we need to get that one. Oh, but the butterflies man. is nice. It's got other stuff, scientific stuff in that. So yeah. Oh, nice. Simpsons Futurama crossover crisis. Yep. That's absolutely brilliant. What do you make of the fact that Futurama, at the time of recording, is meant to be coming back again? Oh, I'm loving it. Yeah, I'm loving the thought it's coming back. Yeah, I was worried if they didn't like in the uh, negotiate for to give John DiMaggio like the uh, the pay that he was due. Especially doing voice acting myself, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we get majorly screwed when it comes to voice acting. We need the money. All right, totally. Cause, like, cause when, when when I heard about it, and like, everybody's like, oh, oh, he's just trying to get more money. It's like, well, yes, yeah. he's trying to get more money. He's trying to get the money that he's due. Yeah, well, <laughs> not just for him, but for everybody else. Yeah, that's it's a rare commodity, you know, like the whole like, know your worth. Well, a lot of like Aye. a lot of people on our side of the pond don't really are always starting to clue into that after like the pandemic and stuff that like, we're starting to clue into like you know let's figure out what we're worth and if you don't match it bolt but, but the Americans have been handling that for years and it's always been a good kind of mindset I know that was a little bit of a tangent but it just shows you like Matt Green has <laughs> created created big universes well it says like pardon me well, that's what happens when you have ordinary goat kids well, uh, so he's created like his universe with Futurama and then he, before that was The Simpsons and that has been ever expanding well, and Hank Scorpio is probably the most successful Bond villain to never be a Bond villain Aye 
Well, I think it was what it's, was. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's the fact that in all of the Simpsons, the main villain is Sideshow Bob. He oh, yeah. shows up in multiple episodes across various seasons. It, across various seasons, and then you get this one person who shows up in one season, mm-hmm. and he has more more people talk about him than other people that have been in at once. Yeah, and more successes than Sideshow Bob. And more successes than Sideshow Bob. He killed more people. Yeah. Sideshow Bob's killed zero. <laughs> yep. And one of them is a 10 year old boy and an eight year old girl. But he's still yep. not been able to manage that. That's one thing that Scor- uh, what really set Scorpio apart. Like, he was never one for, you know, hurting children. Mm-hmm. Well, at least not like in like physically getting his hands dirty and beating the crap out of a kid. Like, I'm sure, like, you know, him basically like taking a, a nuke laser to France was what well, there was obviously be a lot of children killed in that one. But yeah, that's, nobody, that's, but, that's collateral damage, though. That's yeah, damage. that's that's not like I killed them. I I told them if you yeah. don't pay, you don't you don't adhere to my demands, they're gonna get bombed. Mm. So it's their fault. It's not his. And it was also France's fault because no one ever says that. Like, what? And that's I think that's purely because they gave us pizza, and I'm okay with that. That's true. What? Well, as everybody knows, I am a pizza fiend. Um, that's that's my that's my food of choice. So that's actually Got... what I had for dinner today. <laughs> oh, nice! What pizza did you have? Uh, it was just a wee good fellas pizza. Nice. And oh. what? And spe- uh, specific was it like a cheese tomato? Or was it like tell me the toppings? This, this is gourmet shit for me. Hello. Right. <laughs> You cut out very briefly there, Kev. So what we'll do is I'll just uh, what, uh, just tell me what you had in your pizza. It was half cheese, half pepperoni. Oh, very nice, very nice. What? Uh, yeah. What? Especially like it's kind because today's what the, t- the time of recording. It's a Tuesday, like so. We have a bit of Domino's too for Tuesday as well. We need to get one of them sorted. Uh, like like have when we get like a uh, an in studio one. What we we'll need uh, to get, like, get pizza out and just be like right well hey let's do this <laughs> so we're covering a bit of like scorpio with uh, mr freeze what i think for his cultural relevance like he's he's part of batman's rogues gallery so that instantly gives him the cred yeah. but the one thing that really sets him back i feel was that he was he's been made more of a joke than most of the rogues galleries mm-hmm. like like he was he was a joke against Caesar Romero's Joker. Now Aye. that that takes some doing. It does. Well, so he says he's considered a joke and amongst the biggest jokes of them all in the Adam West era. Well, and then well he has a shot well at his uh, re- uh, uh, well big screen redemption well, and gets you know the Arnold Schwarzenegger treatment. Again, I was not um, impartial to that if you take the movie for what it is. What Schwarzenegger was the only one that knew the assignment. What and he did it. Aye. So I got to give him his due. What, but at the time of this recording, those are the two big screen what, like movie adaptations that have came to fruition. And well, because well, the Adam West one did have a movie. Well, neither of them have done done him justice. No. But uh, what Gotham did uh, an interesting take on him. Well, I personally mm-hmm. don't think it was the best, but what well, props for the commitment? Well, it the was, best. It was good for what it was. Yeah. And in, in that setting, it worked. Yeah. It could have been done a lot better, mm. but it worked. Yeah. A lot of things could have been done better, though. I, I know that there would have been, like, you know, legal with Warner Brothers and all that kind of stuff, but there's, yeah. always, there's always that type of, like, studio kind of thing. But well, that was why we never got like the kind of pro- the Joker origin story that Gotham were going for at first, because they yeah. still had the rights to him, and they were like, "Well, we've, we've got him for Dark Knight, we've got him for Joaquin Phoenix." Like it's uh, like, yeah, you just got to make Jew, and then we had the whole convoluted, yeah. you know, it's this guy, and he becomes up well, all this way, and then he dies. And no, it turns out he's a twin, and no, this is meant to be the real Joker, and then they flash forward, and what well, he looks like, like some sort of sandy, dried in scrotum. Like he just mm-hmm. looked, ho- he looked horrible, horrible in that. Uh, but again, Aye. 
But again, a, a side tangent, but it proves that like even when they were doing the most sloppiest of jobs by the end with Gotham, because Gotham were overall great series. I, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, it turns out that Jada Pinkett Smith was just playing herself. But anyway. Apparently, I. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, allegedly, allegedly, we must cover all bases there. But the fact yeah. that we are, we are remembering characters like Fish Mooney, what, uh, uh, Penguin and Riddler, which were absolutely played to perfection. What, um, Aye. Then you had the uh, characters, what, I would say Mr. Freeze was in the second tier. Well, maybe even maybe even the third mm-hmm. tier because you still had guys like uh, like Hugo Strange that I would say were more fleshed out than him. So it's not exactly, so it's not exactly the the biggest compliment to give. The only one that I really think has had brought the character to life was the Batman animated series in the nineties. That was mm-hmm. that that was so much better than it had any right to be that Mister Freeze character. I know. Oh, well, I know. Well, you, you feel for the guy as a kid watching it, but see, when you become like a husband, you understand and w- would would probably think, I would do that. Mm-hmm. If that happened to my wife, I would probably do that. Well, I'd probably go down that road. Well, it made it so relatable, letting just the glowing red eyes in the dark, like that, that kind of 90s style animation. You know, where we would have like your normal kind of thing, we'll see where it would just like playing out, playing out, playing out. They would have like a still shot. And it's a lot grittier, the, the, the strokes are a bit more kind of fuzzed up. And you just have like this one kind of clear shot of the two red eyes. And you're like, holy moly, this is this is going to go down. Mm-hmm. Well, and well, it was one, you always felt like, could he be an anti-hero? What could, or, or is he a straight villain? Or is he a rogue? Because you understood his motivations. Sometimes you did want him to get the win. Sometimes, like, like just like just so he could have his happy ending with his wife, and then just go off into the die frost set. Can't say sunset for him; he would die. Uh, maybe that's why I, I connected him as well. It was like being ginger. Like go out to the sun, and that's you. You're gone. Uh. <laughs> I've not got that problem. Yeah, yeah, you're quite, you're quite lucky that way. Like, yeah, that, that's probably why I connect with him. Like, we're both we're both blue blooded, so to speak. Mm. But yeah, I think based on I know I've I've tried to argue some of the points, but what well, and some of them I think I've I've done all right. But I would say I mean you've I, got you've got the video games as well. Yeah, yeah. We are they sort of I took the character from the animated series mm. and put that into the games because if you had to try and take like any of the other iterations of Mr. Freeze and put them into the game settings that the, the games were, mm. it would just be a complete joke at Whitney work. Mm-hmm. But they took it from the animated series and gave them that entire backstory mm. and it worked in the games as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, say, I mean, because I'm not much of a gamer, well, I can't use that for my my argument because I've not really... I've heard good things about, like, you know, like Arkham Knight series and stuff like that, but I've mm-hmm. but... but I cannot play games for a shit. I am horrible at them. <laughs> but so I just kind of go with the, the visual media that's presented to me. Well, but it just shows you that like Mr. Freeze has had so many attempts at incarnations. Well, and we could only really think of one each technically that landed well, to the to the style that he's meant to be portrayed. Like me, the Batman animated series and you for the, the games. Mm-hmm. Whereas Hank Scorpio has had properly one appearance yep. hit the nail on the head everybody quotes that you know the stop him he's supposed to die mm-hmm. what well, uh homer uh, on your way out if you want to kill someone that would be great mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he just picks a grenade as he goes yeah well and just that entire scene he's having a big emotional arc about what to do with his family what well, mm-hmm. while the whole place is exploding around him and he's still what doing one of the best boss talks that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. What he totally empathizes with Homer. What uh, at some point, some points himself, he's just like, Stay here with me, we'll go bowling, kaboom in the background. Mm-hmm. But eventually, he says, like I'm disappointed, but do what's best for your family. What whereas, you know, and he felt heart sorry for Homer because even though he's working for a vicious dictator, what it was the one job he was good at. It was, 
but he, he's already working for a vicious dictator. Yeah, but he's not anyway. Good at, he yeah, went he's one good dictator at that, to another one. Yeah, but he's not good at that job. He was good at this job. It all worked out for him there. Which makes you wonder like, if, if there'd be like a multiversal arc of what if Smithers had actually went to Globex. Because mm-hmm. he was the first one to get asked and knocked them uh, back. They'd probably be 900 more efficient. <laughs> yeah. I think world domination in three weeks. Yeah, pretty sure that that could have been that could be a Simpsons sequel, like a multiverse mm-hmm. arc of what would have happened if Smithers had went and all of a sudden like he's like the right hand man to Hank Scorpio. But <laughs> that could be something. So uh, uh Mr. Graining, like if you're if there's any chance this gets back to you, like hit me up. This could be your the, your swan song right here. And that's because you wonder how the Simpsons are ever gonna finish. How would they do it? I think it, I think one of the most logical ways would be with one of their best villains, which has been Hank Scorpio. Uh, well, me and the missus, we were talking about how The Simpsons could end. And it's mm. like, well, and this was her idea. She said, the best thing I think would be, it goes back to a Christmas episode. And it actually is the very first episode. Ah. And it's just in a continuous loop. So the last episode is essentially the first episode. Yeah, that's kind of why... That's actually quite good, and it's why I was a bit hesitant about Futurama coming back, because that's essentially mm-hmm. what they've done with the finale there. The way it's set up was that they had to go back to the start, and they were just in, they were going to be forever in this loop. Well, mm-hmm. Which I also thought was ingenious, because it would make you want to go back and watch the first episode again and keep on watching it. So it gets, so it gets those views and more syndication and more money. So I was mm-hmm. like that. I was like, it was a very inventive way to do it. Um, but the episode itself was a fucking gut punch, man. Like I was not. Oh, I know. Not since uh, Fry's dog was I greeting that hard. <laughs> but, I were not allowed to watch that episode in the house anymore. No, I I refuse. I refuse to watch it. What if if I know it, if I know it's on, I'm like nope. But like, I've got the DVDs, and I'm like, I just skip that episode. Can't do it. Wow, but there was there were so many gut punch moments in Futurama as well. I mean, the one with Fry's brother. Oh my god, that ending. Oh no. That ending broke me. Absolutely broke me. Well, I, I, know. Pit, I pity any kids that were growing up at that time, and that's how what like, those type of those shows were how they discovered the concept of death. Mm-hmm. Well, those are some fucked up ways to figure that out, man. I know. But, so I would say for round one, for cultural relevance, I would say that Hank Scorpio has just about edged it. Just about. It was close. It was close. Yeah. Yeah. I try I tried to do my best to argue it, but what well, it's what well, he's had more iterations, which means he's got more chance of Mr. Freeze has more chance of a downfall because he's had more iterations that haven't mm-hmm. been good. If it was someone say like Say like Batman, well, I would have had maybe a bit more of a chance because he's had more good iterations than bad, in my opinion. So I would have been able to give it, give it more of a fight. But when you get Scorpio and you just nail it on the head the first time, it's perfection. What well, they don't even need to feel like they have to do another episode for him. It's just a singular moment. He had his time in the sun, mm-hmm. a couple of wee slight cameos here and there, but nothing, nothing to tarnish the legacy. That he made nah. off of one off of one episode, when also the fact that it was in Sim- he was in when Simpsons was in its prime. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it's got it's got to take uh, take the cake, I would say, or take the cake. Nah. Nah. There we go. So now we move on to round two, and that is abilities. This is where we look at the physical and mental capabilities of our contestants and see who would win in an out and out battle. Now, I've got to say, buddy, Hank Scorpio has the brains. He definitely he does. He has the brains. He has a little bit of brawn as well. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's no scared to get his hands dirty. No. Well, I, I, but I wouldn't see him actually, you know, doing a fist fight with somebody. I could see him mm. using the flamethrower because we've seen Aye. it. And it was just hilarious. <laughs> the one thing I do like mm. about him is that he doesn't, he doesn't bluff for bluffing's sake. Well, mm-hmm. or do the or do the whole kind of stalling to buy time. It's like it was like, you know, I've got a doomsday device to prove I'm not bluffing. Boom, 59th Street, 59th Street Bridge blown up. 
straight away. Aye. Uh, I've got to say for Freeze, he's got the bit of the, he's got, he does put the super in super villain. Uh, don't get me wrong, like he could be taken out by a torch, essentially, or a heat lamp. Yeah. Well, if used properly. That's why I think they would be such a good, a good fight. Imagine like his freeze ray against his uh, Scorpio's flamethrower. Mm-hmm. It'd be like Harry Potter and Voldemort just be standing there for about 10 minutes like, you just gonna call this a draw? Yeah. No, 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 no. Keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. Another half hour, maybe we'll call it. <laughs> yeah. Or they'd be like, or one of them would go, I call it a draw, and then just deliberately pff, use that wee extra push. <laughs> Aye. But yeah, uh, I mean, Freeze, Freeze also has that badass suit, though. Mm-hmm. That, that suit is, don't get me wrong, like, it's extremely clunky. Well, so it's so it so it slows him down, especially if it's like the the live action ones. Mm-hmm. But if we're going the animated, like, well, it seems his suit is more streamlined. I feel it's it's more fabric than metal. yeah, yeah. It seems to have what uh, it's more more durable in a fight. Mm-hmm. I would say, but, um, obviously he's got he has kind of you know ice palace, the fortress of solitude kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What? But he does have a weakness that I think Scorpio could exploit. Norma. Mm. Because, well, I didn't pick up on, you know, Scorpio having any, what, family ties, did you? From the episode, no. Mm. Uh, but from what he says to Homer, you sort of that think that he might have a family because I you do what's best for you and your family and yeah. I think well only somebody who has a family knows that yeah. that is what you do, you do what's best for you and your family mm-hmm. so if it came down to these two fighting, would Scorpio use somebody's wife as collateral damage mm. would he use them to get his way I mm. don't think he would at the same time, though, I do think that, that there is a, there's a sinisterness to him mm, there is. that that I would say that he would be more likely to pull the trigger than Freeze would. Probably because because Freeze is like well, is a good guy done wrong. Mm-hmm. He he be done dirty. Well, so he still ha- even though what like, he has like you know a cold heart, it still beats. Whereas Scorpio can go from being the nicest guy in the world. You know, like gives given like the Simpsons what one of the best houses they've ever had. What mm-hmm. what prom what promises him like an extra story in his house after he tackles James Bond. Uh-huh. Or or James Bunt, what we have to James say. Bunt. Yeah. Ingenious Mr. Bunt. What and um, what does all what does all these nice things and seems like the nicest guy in the world, like you know, gets Homer to tell him his dreams and what mm-hmm. uh, what encourages him to think about like things like hammocks. Like business hammocks, which on oh, the hammock it, district, yes, the, and the hammock. Like that, that, that whole bit was actually just a uh, Albert Brooks completely improvised. That nice. <laughs> he just he, he just totally wrapped it about different types of hammock stores and uh, Dan Castle and that as Homer's like, uh huh, okay, and he had no idea what to say. <laughs> and then eventually, he's like, yes, yeah, it's it's. it's it's over in the Hammock District. And then yeah. Dan Castle and that was like, oh yeah, the Hammock District, I know that. <laughs> and they, they had to animate a bit around that because Matt Green was like, we need to leave that in. That is that is just gold. <laughs> that is going to be one of the funniest bits. I wonder, how, going to be about this. I wonder how much that would have actually cost to get that redone because, I mean, they they did the drawings first and then the voice actors like would uh, work to the, those drawings. Now and uh, the Simpsons was in quite a lot of countries back then. Well, not, was, as, not as not as many now, but still, still quite a few. So lots of different voice casts would have to adjust to that, and that mm-hmm. is just they, they must have been raging at those Americans, like the like the French ones going. Honestly, we've got to say this now uh, after we after we just recorded this, and then all the animators are like, it's triple time to get this done. It's coming out of your pocket, graining. 
Well, technically it was coming out of Fox's pocket, so he's like, ah, do it. Well, They're paying both, the bill. Well, Fox gives them the budget. They've got to spend it how they, how they desire. <laughs> right, and then they've got to go, right, uh, so Fox, we need to come back to you and get an extra $15,000 because we had an improvised scene. But trust me, it's brilliant. No, 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 there's no swear. We're all good. We're all good. There's no swear. There's a lot of hammocks. You'll find out. <laughs> Just imagine that conversation. Imagine how that conversation would have went. Uh, something that I did uh, think think about when I was uh, thinking about, like, did Scorpio have any family attachments? Was he banging his secretary? You know the one that basically like, cat, like uh, back flipped in and like broke a guy's neck with her legs? I think he was. He had to be. I I think he was banging her because it definitely seemed like there was something there between them. Mm -hmm. Well, it just thought that was a lot more than just, you know, a business relationship. Aye. Which could put a wee bit of a, a, a dampener on Scorpio because like, if, he's clear, if you're thinking that he's a family man, he's also an adulterer, which means he wouldn't be afraid to throw his family under the bus. Uh, well, I don't know because... It doesn't really go into it. In the comics, you find out that he's got a son. Oh. Who looks exactly like him and dresses exactly like him. Well, and back... wants to take over the world as well. Hey. But it doesn't go into who his mum is. So his mum could be the secretary. Could be. Could be. That could be something that I wasn't that we didn't click to there. But Aye. does he so his son has ginger hair as well? Aye. Yes. Does he wear the jacket back to front? No. Ah oh, man, no, he doesn't do that. He's missing his father's class then, his charisma. Because I didn't even give you my coat. What? Wow. <laughs> oh man. What? Hey, don't get me wrong. Like, I think I think out and out, like, Scor like Scorpio manipulating wise could probably beat him. What in a kind of maybe in a men maybe in a mental game. Mm -hmm. I think I think physic like physically wise when it came down to just you know what like an all or nothing going for it I think with the tech that Freeze has got I think Freeze could probably could probably take him but probably I would probably Freeze be down yeah and it would also probably be down to who was quicker on the draw well mm -hmm. if they had to do like a, a like a you know a ten paces what well, Scorpio was flamethrower like Freeze was Ice gun. Well, I think Scorpio would not go to the ten and draw. He would. He would be like. He would be like maybe thinking, you know, nine or what, or like eight and drawing. Aye. But I think Freeze would be too. Still be too fast for him because I think he would anticipate that and just go right. You're gone. Yep. Right. So probably. So I think, I think on the grand scheme, what when it comes to like abilities and. I just think I think if Scorpio didn't have all his minions and his entourage around him, yes, he still has the brains, but I don't think he would have those resources to be able to take Freeze on. Where Freeze is more of a, pardon the pun, a self-made man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like he's got he after all the shit went down with Norma, it was like he essentially built himself this yeah. like this thing, and he's proven that he can that he can work alone as well as work with other people. Where Scorpio mm. didn't really have that. He had to have his minions and his other people kind of around him to be like, okay, right, we need to get you guys in. We'll have to do this part for me and this part for me. You need to build this nook. Mm -hmm. Like, what, uh, you guys are, well, I mean, the team that Homer's running, they were like uh, exhausted because they were what, working constantly trying to get that reactor online. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's got more of a team around him. What, to, uh, do all his plans and succeed, mm -hmm. but Freeze is a one man band. Ah, he could he can do like everything that nine hundred Scorpios been doing. Yeah, so it's like it's sort of a ways up mm -hmm. against Scorpio, I suppose. Yeah, so I so I would say I would personally say that Freeze would win that one, but just because he's he's so used to working alone and. Mm -hmm. and not delegating whereas like if we took one thing out of uh, Scorpio's hands like it'd be like oh wait Homer did it's like oh wait <laughs> Homer did that 
what did I do with these hammocks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So I would say, again, we are one apiece, my friend. Yep. So now it comes down to the decider, and that is the universal significance. And for clarification, for anybody who has tuned in, first of all, why haven't you watched the first two rounds? Go back and watch the first, you idiots. Second of all, what, uh, this is, for example, if we took Batman out of the Justice League or out of DC Comics as a whole, how would the rest of that universe cope without him? So it's the same that's applicable to our contestants here. And Mr. Freeze, you could take him out, in all honesty, and it wouldn't affect too much. Because like I said in the second round, like his, he's very insular, he's very alone, he's solitary. But that means that he's more likely to be plucked from obscurity and just dropped somewhere else. Because Batman, yeah. Batman has a rogues gallery for a reason. He's got mm-hmm. the Penguin, he has got Joker, he has got Scarecrow, he has got Riddler. Well, he's got all of these different well, villains to fight mm-hmm. that if one was removed from the equation, it wouldn't affect the overall picture. Because we could yeah. I think I think we can agree the main one for Batman is Joker. Yeah. Joker's yeah. His, Joker's his main antagonist. That's the one that if you took Joker off the playing field, well, it would maybe have more of an impact. Because Joker's also impacted other people in like Justice League with his plans. Yeah. Same deal that uh, like Superman's got, you know, like Brainiac and all those kind of guys. But but if you took yeah. Lex if you took Lex Luthor out of the equation, that's the one that would hit the hardest. Yeah. Whereas I... whereas with Hank Scorpio, even though he's only had one appearance, I personally think if you took him out of the equation, it has more of an impact. I don't think Project mm-hmm. Arturus would have succeeded without him. No, no. Homer sure as hell wouldn't have got the Dallas Cowboys without. Him. Oh, wait, no, he didn't get the Dallas Cowboys. It was Denver Broncos. He got the Denver Broncos. Either way, he wouldn't have got an NFL team. Definitely hasn't as good. No. No, Don't get me wrong. They've they've won more Super Bowls than Dallas, but yeah. At the same time, at the same time, but uh, Homer wouldn't have got any of those teams. And yeah. Yeah. And and more importantly, the, the entire East Coast of the world would not have succumbed to Hank Scorpio's minions. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's kind of like if you take if you take Gru away from Despicable Me and you've got the Minion movie. Aye. The Minion movie proved that the Minions need a master, need someone to follow. It's the same yep. deal with, uh, with, with his team, with Scorpio's team. Mm-hmm. They need someone to work for. They need their their version of Mr. Burns. Yeah. As if, if you take Hank away, mm. the amount of jobs that he created. Because mm. he had his army. Yep. And that that's a that's a great job for people. Mm. That's something that uh, everybody he had all the assistants, all yep. the the nuclear physicists working on his bombs. Mm-hmm. And they're they're well paid jobs. If you're working for a madman, mm-hmm. so take him away. That's hundreds and thousands of people working for him. Mm. Not that job. Yeah, think about how much would Scorpio have actually pumped into the American economy? If you think about it that I... way, well, he was he had like what a proper like business empire. Like he, mm. like he, like he was Steve Jobs before Steve Jobs was cool. Well, or, like, or like, uh, like the twentieth century Elon Musk. It's like it's a set. Well, it's Musk a, is a super villain, though. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I'm pretty sure that if Hank Scorpio was still, right, I'm pretty sure that he would buy Twitter for forty four billion. Oh, I. Well, Scorpio would have to buy him for forty four billion. It's, it's that's that would be small change to him. If you think about, I mean, when did that episode of The Simpsons air? Was it? It was kind of mid nineties, wasn't it? Season eight, so mm. ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, roughly. Aye. Yeah. So, uh, so mid to late nineties. 
And if you think about it, well, at time of recording, we are now at 2022. So think about how much, if it kept in a linear timeline, which obviously The Simpsons does not because they would be older than us. Well, but if you think, if, see if it kept in that linear timeline with Scorpio. Well, at 97 to 8, well, he was, excuse me, well, he was just been like, okay, I am going to well, just live in the East Coast. I've just conquered the East yep. Coast. Well, think about how far he would have went if they kept up with this linear timeline now. They would have, he would have like, mm -hmm. just, he would own like three quarters of the world. At least, at least. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think about, but, and he's just like, I think everybody, what, well, nobody likes like a, uh, like a, a dictator. I mean, that's the whole point. It's in the title. No. What, it's in the word, you know, take off the tater. That's what you are. But everybody would want yep. to be Hank Scorpio. Oh, I totally. Well, I think if someone said that they didn't want to be Hank Scorpio, I'm sorry, but you are liars. Well, the only thing you wouldn't want to be out of Hank Scorpio is being ginger. I think if you made them more of a blonde or a brunette, like kind of color, a brown hair color, I think more people would jump on the Scorpio bandwagon. Probably, but they're just lying, mm. really. I mean, who doesn't want to be Hank Scorpio? No. I mean, I, I mean, I would love to be a Hank Scorpio. I've already got the ginger hair and the beard. I'm already well, you're halfway there. Yeah, I'm getting there. I just need to lose a wee bit of weight and find some way to fund my evil plans. Also, I have minions. I've got Kieran and Connor. They could be my, my yeah. minions. That's true. Well, they could they could take over like some of the duties when like, I'm going out and trying to bomb the bigger countries. I'm like, right, Kieran, you go attack Spain. But they don't. But like, they won't have much on you. Like Connor, uh, you're a bit more psychotic. I would maybe send you to France. Mm. Well, you've got more of a shot there, buddy. I know, I know that's a, that's that's weird life goals for your kids. Eh? Like I want you to rule the world. <laughs> I just it just proves that I've got big aspirations for my kids. Yeah. Well, they could they could be anything they want to be, even a fascist dictator. Yep. As long as I've already like, came up with that deal, it's like if they leave me Canada, and they leave Alice in Italy, and then just give my brother Las Vegas, <laughs> we're well, we're set. <laughs> the rest of the world, they can do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, you would think, like, you think, like, guys like, you know, like, Putin and stuff like that now probably look at what uh, Hank Scorpio and go, why can't we do that? Why mm. can't we take over the world so easily? So I would normally think that uh, we would leave something like this to a public vote, but I think there's no real contest here. I think Scorpio wins it. <laughs> Scorpio has to win it. I mean... Yeah. Basically, I think down to the fact that, you know, without Scorpio, an entire industry and probably half of the world crumbles without him because of the mm -hmm. because of the entire East Coast that he's taken over, as Aye. well as all, all the jobs that he's created, like the community that he's built as well. But because mm -hmm. that, so it's not just the people that are in the jobs, that's families and kids and what well, all, what well, essentially you Thanos him. You th you th I know it's like half of Earth. You do, aye. As well, what is what uh, around that? And in mm -hmm. fairness, like mm -hmm. the community that he built, uh, Cypress Creek. Well, I would love to live there, <laughs> but it just seems like very to seems, totally. Yeah, it seems very peaceful. It seems very serene. What? Like, uh, what? Like you've basically got ev like everything that you could need. Mm -hmm. I'd be all right with that. Uh, yeah, I, I would be a okay living there. Well, yeah. just well, I know it would seem a bit cultish, but as long as I, uh, I was good at my job, I'd be fine with it. It was a wee bit cultish, but well, yeah, but something you, it doesn't you, you often... didn't need to go anywhere, you didn't need to pray to anybody, you didn't need to follow a certain set of rules. All you had to do was, you know, live well, there. Well, that do we your knew, job. Well, that we knew of. Well, we only saw like yeah. a snippet of life, but. Yeah, I wonder what would have happened after that waste community. Like, would it would it yeah just continue to thrive mm. and expand? It would, or would it went like totally Charles Manson? 
you, you would get the cultists coming in. Yeah. To you would, take over. Yeah. They were, they were sure enough. They were, I think if this was still going, Hank Scorpio would need a Netflix documentary made about him. Oh, I. Well, that would that would just sound like so, so, something so Hank Scorpio, though. He would present like the, mm. the, the great glittering bit, and then Netflix would do the, the digging, like and all the other mm-hmm. stuff in his past. It comes out, and then Hank Scorpio straight up murders them. Yeah. Well, I think that that would just be the way that it would go with him. It was just like, yeah, he's like, yeah, follow me. I'm great. Wait, wait, you found what? Give me, give me two seconds. Fucking take him out, take him out now. <laughs> Bang, gone. <laughs> it, it would be, it would be so. So much more better. Oh, I think oh, the connection was dropped. Yeah, we're back. So yeah, we, uh, I got up to the bit where I was saying, you know, to take him out. I was just saying it would be, it would be so much better than what Tiger King was. Oh yeah, I mean, one of those guys. He found out that he was in a cult. Aye. He was in one of the, like one of those ones, and I think one of those cults in the seventies and eighties. And I could so see him being in a Hank Scorpio like cult. Totally. Well, and then like him trying to rise to power through it, and Scorpio going, "We gotta take this guy out." <laughs> it's like, like he, he's not he's not holding up my family values here because he does seem like a very. Well, it seems like one of his values, like we were speaking about earlier, was about family. Whether that mm-hmm. was just like like so bringing in. Like the people that are like wife, kids, like people that he essentially mold and bring into the the Globex corporation regime. Mm-hmm. What? Well, so I think if you had one of the guys for Tiger King, who was uh, that was the guy that was you know that has like three or four different wives and what like, banging everything in sight. What well, uh, if he if he tried to go in there? I'm pretty sure that uh, what well, Scorpio would be like to his assistant. Right, you do that. We can uh, the leg thing that you do. I'm just what well, because he'll think it's sexy. They just break his neck. I'm okay with that. We're cool. I think he'd be all right with that as well. Though. What a way to go. <laughs> what in fairness. <laughs> I think I think all you would need to do is like you know, also load him up with like loads of cocaine, and that would be like his ideal death. It wouldn't be <laughs> hard. It wouldn't be hard. Yeah, I think ninety percent of the time already is. Yeah. Like just a proper drug fueled sex heart attack would de- would would go for him. And this oh. is the thing. Well, we're joking about all this stuff with Scor- with Hank Scorpio, what is society? We could not we could not make a single joke about this with Mister Freeze. Well, he's he is too he's fortress of solitude material, like proper like if yeah, like like. He'd be like, what would happen if Superman would just decide to spend all day in one of those big blankets with sleeves? What? And just had all day, just be like, mm-hmm. I miss Lois. I miss Lois. I might go out and kill some people, but I miss Lois. See, it, see, it seems like his bag. It seems Plenty like his... That's all right. We got, we got I can still hear you. We're all good? Ah, still back. Yeah, we're oh, yeah, back. Yeah. We're back. Yeah, it's all good. Well, Zoom has really got to sort this out, and more probably Sky needs to sort out my Wi-Fi. Seems like, um, but I got this oh, new laptop. I had, I had to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What were they? Well, how? What were they like? What? what so what was up? Uh, 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 Friday. Hmm. Uh, and it was completely. Terrible on and off, on and off all day. Mm. Uh, so, got them to come out, and they came out of problems. <laughs> but he said it was not an hour problem at, at our end, it was the exchange. So, he went there and fixed that. Then he phoned his back and said, like, Yeah, that's that's you all done, should be fine mm. now. And to be yeah. fair, there's been no real problems with the internet. Mm. Well, in fairness, like, uh... Ours keeps dropping out, like, and it comes up with this whole kind of 
you know, the selection of, you know, is it connected to a router? Is it connected to a plug in the wall, essentially? And then you have to try and relaunch it and reconnect it. And I'm like, honestly, guys, what what am I paying for here? Seriously. Aye. What am I paying for? It's, uh, it's unreal. Like, see, well, technology is making the movie forward. It's moving back. Like, I got this new laptop. Well, and in fairness, like, it's a gaming style laptop, but it's meant to help better with streaming stuff like this. Started off great, and it's been going shitter and shitter and shitter ever since. I'm like, I'm like, any guys that would try and do <sighs> game, try and do gaming on this laptop would honestly consider probably offing themselves. Well, the amount of lag that is going on, it's crazy. I mean, if I'm having lag doing the uh, like the podcast with you, imagine what these guys are thinking. Oh god, I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so back to the point of of Mister Freeze, like. You know, we couldn't make these type the type of jokes we're making about Scorpio with him because there isn't anything mm. to dig into with him. No. What we what we have his gist is basically him wife frozen, him bad accident, him freeze people, him try to find cure for wife. Occasionally Batman runs in. Yeah. That, that's that. Like, like you can, you could what and I think out of all the rogues gallery. He's the weak link. He's the one that you, you would be able to go, right? You could be defeated by a blowtorch. Whoop. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, and a lot of the other times that Batman runs in, he can talk to Batman. Mm -hmm. Batman can empathise with him because Batman's went through a loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And Mr. Freeze is essentially losing his wife because she's not dead yet yeah he's just slowed it down but if she gets if she gets unfrozen she will die mm -hmm. and he can't bring himself to get to that point yeah so he can be spoken down you know it's like you're, you're doing this to save your wife but you're hurting other people you're causing other people to go through what you're going through mm -hmm. and so it's like he's easier to get through to yeah than a lot of the other rogues. Yeah, definitely. It's like, like knowing uh, One Division, spoilers for any One Division ones I haven't seen, but when it's the two visions and they're just talking, mm -hmm. like it was more like an intellectual battle. That's how. Yeah. I would love to see like a version of that type with Batman, like where it's just Batman and Freeze, like in a room, no, like. No tech, no, also, there has to be a certain level of tech to keep Freeze from, you know, dying. Well, but it's just like, mm -hmm. they're just both there, sat and discussing it. Like, say, well, that could be like a wee alternate kind of fan theory where like Freeze, for example, maybe has found out who Batman is. Like, well, knows Bruce mm -hmm. Wayne, knows about the lost stuff like that. And it's just, well, and they both just kind of put, like, go, right, you know, guard down, no illusions, no, no bat tricks, no Freeze guns. Let's just, let's talk this out. It would be more of a psychological mm -hmm. battle. I could see them doing that, yeah. like, doing something like over a game of chess, and it would still, and it would be mm -hmm. riveting to me. No, a lot of fans are probably screaming at uh, the laptops right now going, Andrew, what the hell are you smoking talking about this? Well, but I think it would it would be, see if it was uh, written correctly what, and given what, the right type of study and research, I think that would be a brilliant, like, kind of one-off, like, special just having them game of chess discussing the, what how they mm -hmm. wound up to be where they are like like mm -hmm. uh, like the al pacino robert de niro scene from heat except the mr Fre except mr freeze and batman that would be class uh, like, oh. i mean they did sort of do something like that with batman and mr freeze with the game uh, mm -hmm. it's why they downloadable things yeah and like batman's helping eh because mr Freeze didn't help scarecrow take over the city his wife's been stole mm -hmm. and so mr freeze takes over a, a ship freezes all the bad guys batman goes to the ship and says look i'll help you find your wife and then he helps him find his wife mm -hmm. and then batman brings her back because she's come out of the containment unit it's, it's messed up and then mm. Batman brings her and then the army 
the bad guys are making the same mm. on this boat that's covered in ice and you know, that's the he's shooting all the tanks as is Batman and his Batmobile mm. but Batman's getting overrun and he says just do it and then he says I'm sorry mm. and then he blows Was it up? But Batman's getting overrun, and mm. well, it's not but into the moonlight. And then Batman's like, ah, "No, let them go. They deserve a happy ending." And it's like, and it's something like that. I mean, if they'd done that in that animated mm. series, that would be brilliant. Yeah, but it's just the the way they done it in the game. It was brilliant, and you get Kevin Conroy and Batman, so. Oh, oh, aye. That's always good. You can't beat Kevin Conroy. You just can't. And that's why no, I think, like, no. the, like Victor Freeze, like, the, the voice actor for him in the animated series, for me, that's just, that's an iconic voice from Mr. Freeze. Like, I've heard, like I said, Schwarzenegger knew the assignment what, and played it the way mm-hmm. that it was meant to be done for that type of thing. But you always think of that kind of, revenge is a dish best served cold. That kind of slow, monotone mm. kind of voice, like almost robotic. Wow! Well, and it was it just. And if it wasn't for the animated series bringing that back so well, well, wow, Master Freeze could have been one. Of, could have been like the Condiment King. Aye, you could have had that same kind of like you know, huh? That guy existed. I know. Well, wow, so that when that was one of the things that I love about the animated series, like it brought Harley Quinn to the to the floor. Don't get me wrong, what? Like, uh, there's there's a there's a debate about Harley Quinn on that one, but what there there's a debate because Batman the animated series brought her in, mm-hmm. uh, and the same like the same with Mister Freeze, like gave him such a more rich and unique backstory that a lot of people what thought that he was an original character as well from the mm-hmm. for the ninety show and they were like, uh, funny story guys, no. look at this guy, oh come on, can, can you not just let us have this one? Let us think that no. they made them, but oh, no. No. they just made they just made a better version. Yeah, which what which which worked for me in fairness. So I would say, well, on based on the arguments overall, I would say that Hank Scorpio has won the premiere episode of Vicious Villains. Yay! When I find an applause button, I'll be able to use that. Way. Who knows? Maybe one day I will find an applause button. Could be on my editing software somewhere. I'll see if I can try and find it. But you know that'll just download like a random applause sound <laughs> or like trumpet get, bone or something like that. Get the Scooby Doo laughter track. <laughs> they just get. I would like the Monty Python version of that. You know where they go, and there was much rejoicing, and they just go, "Yay!" Well, I would want some, I would, old <laughs> I'll just like the was it the Billy West of his dolphin clap? Aye, <laughs> just having something like that. But man, but I have to say, like, if, what, we're starting to find a rhythm here, man. What we how, how we go about these arguments and how we present them. Well, I'm liking it. Yeah, but we're starting. To, we're starting to find the flow. I believe. Well, yep. and, so I will. If we'll put, what do you think? Should we put it to the the public vote of who should go up against them for the next round of vicious villains? I've already, I've already got yeah. one. I've already got one guy in mind. Well, uh, and it's a bit. It's a for. You know, I'll just tease it for the audience. It's it's an eighties cartoon villain. Because like, I don't want to give too much away. Because there's plenty of eighties cartoon villains, but I don't want to give too much away. That's- there's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty. Well, we'll see what they cut, uh, what they come up with because I would want to go down the eighties cartoon villain route. That was that was kind of like our Saturday morning cartoons where we grew up as well. What and there's a plethora of ones we could use. What and some that oh, would just God, some that would just be batshit crazy as well. I would well, I would just love it. Ones that would just what we would just go. We've got to argue for this guy, really. <laughs> uh, or the or this girl. Brave, brave new world guys what my friends never know if you could what well, if well, we want more female engagement as well what well, if there's any any women out there that can go and fight for 
a female supervillain or a female superhero, come on, give us get in touch with us. Let us know. Because actually, I had that when we did the first one, the Batman Deadpool. Someone had said, like, uh, "Why don't you do one of your next super fights to be Wonder Woman?" And I went, two straight white guys trying to argue a point for a woman. That would not go down well in today's society. We would get cancelled within a heartbeat. What if yep. what if we're going to argue for them? We would need to get what someone of that same gender or someone who can represent that gender. Otherwise, we are screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I always bring your wife in what, and get her you know, to argue with one of the supervillains. Oh, yeah. What's well, well, Trying to get my wife, it would be easier to like to you know try and pry a dead person's jaws open with a carjack. <laughs> I love her dearly, but yeah, it's 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 not as likely. <laughs> okay, man, it's been a pleasure as always to to you know go sparring with you. Aye. Well, we've what we've we've laughed, we've cried, we've had several internet connections. <laughs> a lot of several internet connections. Yeah, damn it's you, just, Sky. <laughs> yes, well, we are not a fan of Sky, and I'm not a fan of Zoom for still keeping this 40 minute runtime thing going. Come on, guys. Well, I've gave you a I lot know. of services. So many people have. Bring back the unlimited. Well, it's just it's, it's ridiculous, man. Well, you just don't understand. I don't know. So for so. For our fellow, what, uh, our fellow superhero fans, like the the Ginger League, as as Kevin coined it, well, I still love that. But it will be used. We are the Ginger League. Well, so as it says up above me, like you know, give us a sub, give us a like, watch the what, keep watching the videos. Like more we do, better we're gonna get. And to anybody yep. that has been joining our community, joining the Facebook groups, and that like, following is on, like you know, the Twitter and the Instagram. What well, uh, like really appreciate it, what well, and keep engaging. What well, we're gonna keep going as long as you guys want us to keep going, and more importantly, give us money. Yep, definitely. So until next time, my fellow <laughs> super, my fellow superhero fans, definitely. my ginger leak. But he has been super, and he has been ginger, and we are out of here. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.